Welcome back. You're watching World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. 2020 is an optimal year for Mars emissions, given the close distance between Earth and Mars. On July the 23rd, the China National Space Administration launched its Tianwen One, or Questions to Heaven which carries the country's very first Mars rover and orbiter. It should arrive in orbit around the Red Planet in February. If the mission is successful, China will join the United States to become just the second country to operate a rover on the Red Planet. Last week, the UAE also launched its HOPE satellite towards Mars. And the U.S. Space Agency also aims to dispatch its next generation rover, Perseverance. So why are humans going to Mars? And what is China's Mars mission all about? Will it signal a space race with the U.S. or actually it creates more opportunity for international cooperation? Let's invite our panelists. For Tianwen-1, Mars rover's mission, in Beijing, Yang Yuguang, professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. In Washington, D.C., Dr. Ami Tabaha Ghosh, who is the chair of the Science Operations Working Group for the NASA's Mars Exploration Rover mission. Welcome to both of you. Dr. Ghosh, uh, your input first, the uh, reaction to the success so far from the China mission. So I think it's an incredible um, first step. So actually here, you know, there is the chance of uh, failure is when you reach Mars, when you land on Mars. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that that goes fine. Um, but um, it's an interesting, so, so I have worked for multiple rover missions and I can tell you um, it's an incredible journey. So think of, you know, what is the loneliest road that you have ever traveled? Say you're driving in Alaska, there is a 500 mile road and you meet a human being every 20 miles. Now imagine you're on Mars and now that road, there is nobody, no human on that road. And worse, and better still, there is no road. You, you're free to drive wherever you want. <laughs> so this is the adventure you're starting on. Professor Yang, as Dr. Ghosh just mentioned, the real test is when you landed on Mars, what's going to happen? And China is still a little bit far from there. Uh, what do you make of the prospect? The most uh, tough point or the most uh, dangerous part mm -hmm. is the entry, descending and landing. Uh, what you see, we've already have a successful launch uh, last week and uh, we are going to Mars. After seven months, we'll have a very critical point, which is called the uh, mass orbit insertion. Uh, it is the first time that China do it. I hope it will be a complete su success. But at that moment, uh, the most dangerous part is the uh, landing procedure. For you see, uh, until now, only the United States have ever uh, successfully, successfully uh, landed on Mars surface and performed scientific research. So this is the first time we do it, and still uncertainty, risky, and uh, uh, probably uh, we will have many great challenges on it. Mm. Having said that though, putting the romanticism aside, we are seeing also apparently uh, outer space competition between China and the United States. For example, on the mission on Mars, of course, China is just starting. It's a different story. But still, uh, are we seeing signs of uh, former Soviet Union and the United States uh, competing the so-called uh, Star Wars uh, uh, kind of competition, uh, Dr. Ghosh? So I would think so because the conditions were different. Um, so here you can think that the U.S. landed on Mars in 1976. So uh, this is 45 years too late. Two is if it is a prize, if, if, if there's a competition, if there's a space race, what is the prize here? The prize is just um, finding out more about the rocks and soil on the climate of Mars. It's nothing uh, tangible or ta nothing economic. So, um, see, it is very easy to, for the press to say competition, but you have to also remember, it's just United States and China are not in the game. United Arab Emirates launched a mission just last week. Yes. Then um, the Europe is on, also in the game. Russia is on, in the game. Japan is in the game. So I think this is a 
all advanced nations are looking at the most interesting of problems. Mm. I'd love to believe uh, in your description. Uh, Professor Yang, your perspective about that? Well, I totally agree with Dr. Amitabha Ghosh. You see that the United States is now leading, plays a leading role in the Martian exploration. Uh, it already has at least four rovers uh, rowing, uh, ever rowing on the Martian surface, and uh, the only country which can perform scientific research on the Martian surface. And you see that every two years or every four years, uh, the United States will have a mass, mass mission. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you see, with China, we have this Tianwen-1 mission, and in the future, we will have another sample return mission. So, you see, we only have these two missions. We will not challenge the leading role of the United States. We develop this um, mass mission just because we need it. We need to promote our, our high technology field, and we need to promote our uh, national economy, and this kind of uh, plan uh, planetary research will give a better understanding mm -hmm. of these kind of scientific research goals. And, you see, that's... Uh, as uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh have mentioned that yes. uh, all space capable nations have joined the research of Mars because, you know, these countries all think that it is their duty to do some contribution to the Martian research. So, you see, it is the right time for China to do it, but we only planned two missions for the next two decades. So, you see, we don't challenge any, country, any other country. And I emphasize again, it is meaningless for us to compete each, each other. I remember you know, watching movies related to Mars, and it was an interesting combination of Chinese investment and the Hollywood production. Fascinating. But now we are seeing that countries are working hard on Mars. Eventually, what are some of the immediate goals, do you think, uh, Mr. Dosh, uh, as a result of these research? Okay, the immediate goal is what is not in the story picture right now. <laughs> so Elon Musk has a company called SpaceX, and they are trying to make a spaceship to go to Mars on a commercial basis with 400 passengers so that the cost per ticket is about $200,000 or the cost of maybe an apartment in Beijing. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> so they are trying to make, so, so this is incredible. So, you know, if you ask anybody 20 years back, they would say, it would take the GDP of a major country to go to Mars for one person. So, so Mars is becoming mainstream. Okay, thank you so much for both of you joining us and helping us understand better the missions of Mars from both countries. Yang Yiguang and Amtiash Ghosh, thank you so much. All the best.